Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, uh, I promised that I would do a follow-up after my DJI Air 3 crash uh, a couple weeks ago, and this is it. So I do have my, my Air 3 back uh, from uh, DJI, and I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, it was repaired at no cost to me, uh, but there's more to the story, and I'll include that at the uh, at the end of the video here so I decided to do more testing and I wanted to see what some of my other drones would do in the same situation that the Air 3 was in uh, the day that it smacked into that wall and crashed so I did uh, I, I tried the uh, the Air 2S the uh, Mavic 3 Pro uh, the DJI Mini 4 Pro the Autel Nano Plus the Skydio 2, and I even did a Hubson drone. I did the Hubson Ace Pro. So I compiled all that testing into a video, uh, and I'm going to show that to you right now. And, you know, usually I live narrate all my videos. Of course, this kind of testing, it was kind of impossible to do that. So what you're going to hear is a voiceover uh, as I'm doing the, uh, the testing. And then once you see that testing, I'm going to explain to you uh, everything that uh, that I went through and what I ended up uh, back from from DJI with on the Air 3 and how that all worked out. So here's the testing I did with those other drones. Okay, this is the first day of testing. I always show the Before You Fly app and the UAV forecast. Uh, so the first drone was the DJI Air 2S, the good old reliable Air 2S. Uh, so you can see it now going over the top of the first building and look at the altitude, the height there. We're at about 6.8 meters and look at it immediately rises up as I push forward. Now watch as we get to the wall here. It just picks itself up right over the top. Uh, so it rose probably a full meter there which is you know a little over three feet. So uh, I like how the Air 2S uh, sees the uh, obstacle early and starts rising early here you can see the same thing here you can see it pick itself right up over the top so uh, pretty cool uh, so then next in line uh, was the little Autel Evo Nano Plus now the thing to know about this drone we're over that same building it does not have a pass so it'll just break uh, and I was kind of tentative as I was getting because I didn't trust it and I was probably even a little high here but uh, uh, you know the drone definitely stopped before it got there and then here boy you really hear the uh, uh, the, the the downward uh, signal from the uh, from the obstacle avoidance and watch we're pretty low here watch as it gets close and it sees the tail but, and I think right there, I think I could run it. I think I could have ran it right into the wall if I wanted to. I don't think it really saw the front. But here in a second, I'll point the camera down, and then you'll see, yeah, I point the camera down right there, and you'll see then the OA seems to work a little bit better. It definitely sees the front, the nose there, and it just wouldn't, it wouldn't move forward. I think uh, under certain circumstances, I could have run the little Nano Plus right into the wall if, if I wasn't careful. And so next, here's the big dog, the DJI uh, Mavic 3 Pro. Uh, and I'm going to be honest with you, in this testing, I don't think I showed you much. I think I was too high. Look, I'm at like 8 point some meters high. Uh, and it didn't even really rise up as it got close here. Uh, I think I was so tentative when I was trying to test this guy. Look, I'm even higher here. I just don't think I had the drone low enough to really give us any meaningful uh, results. Uh, the drone was, uh, you know, as I got to the wall, you see the downward sensors there, uh, but I, I think I was just too high. I would have liked to have seen it rise up a little bit as it got towards the, uh, towards the wall. Anyway, then this guy is really interesting, the Mini 4 Pro. Uh, this thing did really well. I'm pretty tickled on this. So 6.5 meters high. So it was definitely low enough. And obviously I'm pretty tentative as I'm getting close to the wall here. Uh, Want to see what it'll do. 
And you can see the front radar there. It clearly sees the wall and, you know, it finally just stops and says, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but keep pressing forward and, uh, and watch what happens. Uh, maybe it wasn't right here. Yeah, right here. So you just continue to press forward, pressing up on that stick. And uh, it finally pops itself right over the top. Look at that. Popped right over the top. So it was able to see that it could rise up and find a way over. Uh, I thought that was interesting as heck. So here I backed it up and, and trying it again. And again, I'm really tentative because, uh, you know, uh, there's some people that, well, yeah. Well, here I'm kind of moving sideways. So this is interesting too. As I'm moving to the left, watch it pop over the top here. Uh, but the point I was trying to make earlier is, uh, you know, a couple of people said, oh, you intentionally crashed your drone. You know, no, I didn't intentionally. You, who would do that? Uh, but anyway, right here, I am uh, adjusting the frame rate down to 30 frames per second in the hopes that that gives it uh, more uh, processing power to be able to deal with obstacle avoidance. And look at this, it does. Watch it pop right over the top here as I keep pushing forward, keep pushing forward, and boom, it just pops right over the top. Uh, the, the, little, the little Mini 4 Pro was impressive. So we're going to try it again here. And again, just on, that, uh, on the right stick, uh, pushing forward, and the little drone will just, uh, it'll just pop right over the top. And I guess I was moving sideways there a little bit. Yeah, let's see it here. It just, yeah, watch that. Pops right over the top. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. This is the one that I I probably started to get some confidence here and tried some different stuff with the little uh, Mini 4 Pro. And again, look at it rise right over as you're pushing that stick forward. I probably did this. I, I kept dropping it lower and lower. Look, we're, uh, we're even lower, and I've got the camera down lower. And as it gets closer, again, boom, it just pops right over the top. Uh, so that is the way I would expect APAS to work. And I'll be honest with you, that's how I expected it to work on the, uh, on the A3. And it definitely did with the little uh, Mini 4 Pro. The Mini 4 Pro did not disappoint. Uh, so then next, I, I got the, uh, uh, my Action 2 camera. And I wanted to show it from the side. So I'm trying to hold the camera up and, and fly the drone at the same time. But you saw it there go over the top. So let's try it one more time here. Uh, again, I'm trying to hold the Action 2 camera and fly the drone at the same time. Uh, but, uh, but you'll see it just pop right over the top. Yeah, this is the one where I was kind of moving sideways a little bit. But it, you'll gradually see the drone. It just goes, okay, that's the way over. And over the top it goes. So this is the next day back at the school uh, before you fly. And then here's UAV forecast. About 60 degrees again. A little more wind. Let's try it with the uh, Skydio 2. Now this drone surprised me. It, uh, I thought that it would uh, have better A-pass. It definitely, the obstacle avoidance worked. In other words, it's not going to hit the wall. Uh, but it didn't find its way up and over the wall like I thought it would. So... That will tell you how advanced uh, DJI's A-Pass is. They did a really good job on that, uh, on the A-Pass. So we'll, we'll, just, uh, we'll just watch this guy for a second. And I'm holding that stick all the way forward, backing it up, trying it one more time here. And uh, straight at the wall. And it just stops. It's just not going to hit the wall. Uh, but at, by the same token, uh, it would get stuck there. It's not going to fly. It's not going to fly over the top of the wall either. And you're going to see here we get quite close. It'll move right in, but it knows it's got all those sensors. Uh, it's not going to hit the wall. So uh, yeah, one more time here. I, I think this is yeah. I think I raised it up higher to see if it would find its way over if it could see the top. And it did. You know, what, once it could see the top here. Now this one is kind of interesting. Watch what the drone uh, does here. Uh, it just uh, kind of moves around. I'm holding that stick full forward. And the drone's, I think, kind of like searching for a way around here. Uh, and it just doesn't see it, so it stops. 
It just will not hit that wall. So while it won't hit the wall, it doesn't. It's not too good at finding its way around. Now right here, I grabbed the uh, again the action two, and uh, and uh, you know trying to show it going into the wall. And there you can see that it just it just stops. It just won't won't go into the wall. And I'm holding the stick all the way forward. And then in a second here, I tried to hold the camera in such a way that you could see the sticks and you could see me uh, pushing forward on the stick and hopefully see the drone at the same time. So you'll see me pushing forward here and I'm just holding that stick forward and, and it, wouldn't, it wouldn't hit the wall. So we'll back it up and we'll try it one more time. Uh, again, trying to hold the camera and the controller and everything all at the same time. But yeah, holding that stick forward and uh, yeah, it's just not going to do it. So. Uh, yeah, you know, good job, Skydio. Uh, but again, it doesn't have the level of A-pass that DJI does. Now, then finally, I got the Hubson Ace Pro out. The Hubson Ace Pro does have their version of A-pass, and it has uh, obstacle avoidance. Now, this is interesting. Watch it go around this building right here. Instead of, you know, of course, the video break up there, that's typical of Hubson. <clears throat> but it went around that building, so they have a different little different algorithm. Instead of going up, it tries to go around, which is kind of interesting in that this drone doesn't have sideways sensors, so it could easily go sideways into something. You'd want to watch where you're going. But you're watching right here. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't hit the building. At one point here, it keeps creeping forward, and I think I could have, uh, if I'd have worked at it, I think I could have... Uh, I, yeah, right right here, I think. It just keeps going further and further forward. I think I, if I'd have worked at it, I probably could have ran the drone into the side of the building, but uh, uh, but I didn't. Uh, so, But it worked. You know, it works. It has obstacle avoidance. Uh, and, you know, you can see it definitely sees what's in front of it. Uh, but it didn't. Uh, there, it really went off there as I got real close there. And it was still creeping forward. I think I could have uh, ran it into the building. Now this one is really interesting here. Watch it try and find its way sideways uh, around the building. It just keeps going sideways. And I'm holding that stick forward uh, till it finds the edge of the building. So a couple of interesting things. When I filed my ticket with DJI after the crash, they asked me to send the, uh, the drone uh, the battery and the uh, controller in. They wanted all three. Now anybody that's dealt with any kind of repair work uh, from DJI before, typically they don't want you to send props, they don't want you to send uh, batteries uh, or controllers. They want just the body of the drone itself typically in those situations. I thought it was interesting that they asked for all that stuff. So well, that was great. I boxed it all up and, and sent it off. And by the way, DJI sends you a prepaid, uh, uh, this, in this case it was a UPS label, that I was just able to box it up, put it on the box, and, and off it went. And uh, mine went to their facility in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, and so it didn't take very long. I got a message back from them that they said, hey, you know, here's uh, they, they even had pictures of the drone and they showed a detailed analysis of everything that was wrong with it, which of course I already kind of knew, but you know, all the details of, you know, this is broken and that's broken, etc., uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, but then what they offered, they said, you can repair it for $165 or I have Care Refresh. Uh, I could spend my $99 Care Refresh uh, and, you know, get another drone back. So I wrote them back and I said, hey, you know, I'm kind of thinking this ought to be warranty repair. Uh, can you take another look at it? And, and I sent them a link to the video that I made about the crash and, uh, you know, basically told them exactly what happened. Uh, and so they were really nice. I got a nice response back. They said, absolutely, we'll analyze it and let you know. And so, oh, probably, I don't know, it was several days later. I think there was a weekend in there, and I got a response back, and they said, hey, you know, uh, 
because uh, they, they named a couple of things, they said uh, what everybody else was saying, oh, you know, it was a monochromatic wall, it may not see that. And then it also mentioned that I had uh, 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 a, a pass, obstacle avoidance, and a pass turned off. And of course, I didn't. I had it on, and of course, I had proof. So I sent them back a note with and I uploaded the screen recording that I had. I think that's good reason to always do a screen recording, a screen recording of the whole flight. And let me back up a little bit. What they said is that I had turned uh, OA and A pass off, which, as you'll recall, when I first started the flight, I did, but then I turned it back on before I took off anyway. So, but I in several areas of my screen recording, it clearly showed that OA and APAS were on. So anyway, I uploaded that file to Google Drive, sent them a link, and I said, here, you know, this, this, I don't understand what's going on there. And I said, I was hoping this would be repaired uh, under warranty. And uh, so they indeed uh, took another look at it. And uh, they got to back to me just a, a little while later, and they said, listen, uh, we're going to they, they called it a courtesy repair. So they're not saying that it's a warranty repair. They're saying it's a courtesy repair. Uh, and I kind of get that, really. I'll be honest with you. Uh, but uh, And they, they thanked me for sending all the information that I did. But then they also sent me another section talking about it may not see other those monochromatic walls. Well, I think my testing kind of proved that I really think that that's something that the drone should have seen, and I really feel like there was something going on with that update. I don't know. I'm not an engineer. I don't pretend to be one, but there was something going on with the drone that particular day that, that it didn't see that wall, because you saw those other drones uh, see it. The only two that I thought maybe I could have ran into that wall if I tried hard enough, I think I could have ran the, the Nano into it, and I think I could have run the Hubson drone into that wall. The DJI drones, I just don't, none of the other ones, they weren't going to hit it. And same thing with the Skydio too. However, that argument all aside, at the end of the day, uh, I did get my, my, uh, my drone repaired and got it back. And so, you know, I have to give kudos to DJI. I think they uh, were very fair about the way they did things. And I... Truthfully, their communication was good, uh, and, and I enjoyed working with them. So also, after everything was said and done, and they, they sent me that note that, yeah, they were going to repair the, the drone and send it back to me, uh, I sent them a thank you note. I said, hey, you know, thank you very much. I appreciate the service. They wrote me back, and they said, you know, we really appreciate it when somebody appreciates what we do. They said, you know, we do about 200 repairs a day at this facility. And they said, it's really nice to know when somebody uh, appreciates the service. So uh, I guess what I'm telling you there is when you're dealing, not just with DJI, but any of these companies on a warranty repair or anything like that, uh, you'll get a lot more with a carrot than you will with a stick. So uh, be nice to them. And I suspect often they'll be nice back to you. But anyway, let's talk about what I got back from DJI. I'm going to put a picture of the box when it came back. So what they didn't do was just send me uh, another retail box with a drone in it. You can see in the picture that I showed uh, that, it, you know, it was just uh, it shrink wrapped or excuse me, uh, bubble wrapped in the bottom uh, of a box and couple of interesting things here. So so the drone itself, the drone uh, came with, it, it, it had my battery in the back of it, but but this is just how the drone came with, with without any propellers installed or anything. Uh, but I checked the uh, serial number in there and this, and they did give me a serial number, so I, I, I knew that truthfully before it got home. But the drone it, this is a different drone than the one I sent them. So it's got a whole different serial number. I don't know if this is one that was repaired some other way. I have no idea how that works. Uh, but you know what? All I care is I have a, a, a workable repaired and the drone looks perfect. Now, here's the interesting part. So I did, I got the, uh, the RC back and I sent the RC to him without the uh, sticks on there. And of course, I didn't get any sticks back. That's fine. That's what I expected. But I can tell that this is the very 
RC that I sent them because it still has my sticker on the back that says Air 3. So I know this is the very same uh, uh, controller that, uh, that I sent them. Uh, well, I guess I can't say that for certain because what if they took my sticker off and put it, put it, I don't know, you know, but anyway, uh, then uh, additionally, uh, the battery that I got back, I believe that's the same battery too because this was battery number two and as you can see, let me see if it'll focus in there, the, the two sticker is still, uh, is still on the battery, so uh, yeah, so I'm assuming uh, that these are the same ones that I that I sent them now. I haven't fired it up yet So is it all paired up? So the other question I have is what about activation? Obviously, it's a different serial number uh, So I'll have a different uh, I'll have to activate I presume I'll have to activate the drone again How does that affect my care refresh? Uh, I, I don't know yet, so I'll do a separate video on that uh, you know, activation, etc., and uh, and pairing to the controller. So I'll find out when when I when I fire this thing up. I'll do a video on that, and uh, we'll see how all that works. Uh, but in any case, I'm back in business, and I'm pleased uh, that DJI helped me out in this situation. Uh, so anyway, that's the whole story of that crash, and it does have a happy ending. So uh, I guess that's about it. This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Most of all, I do appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And of course, we'll see you on the next one. Uh, the DJI Air 3. I can't wait to get this guy up in the air again.